Today I'm going to show you step by step how to assemble a Harbor Freight folding trailer. We'll keep everything beginner friendly and show you which parts to put together first to make assembling this Harbor Freight folding trailer super easy. Be sure to read the owner's manual and follow all safety instructions. Today helping me put this thing together I've got cameraman Roger. So the first thing that you need to do when you get one of these trailers Get everything out of the box, get all your pieces sorted out so that you can see what you've got. When you get these boxes home, be sure you check that you've got the same model for each box and that they didn't accidentally give you a light trailer and a heavy trailer. You actually might wanna check that before you leave the store. I've laid a moving blanket down to put the parts on so we don't scratch the paint. Looks like in the long box, we have all the frame pieces, the tongue and the axle. And then over here in the smaller box, we've got the wheel, the springs and all the hardware. Also in the small box is the lighting kit. This is the first of a series of videos. We'll be covering the lighting installation later. Time to get these bolts organized. Hey, where'd you get that hat and shirt? Well, I'm glad you asked. I got this hat and shirt at MrFredsDIY.com. Now that we have our parts sorted, it's time to check our list to see if there is anything missing. The tools we're gonna to be using to assemble the frame today are a 17 millimeter wrench and a 17 millimeter socket. We're also gonna use a 19 millimeter socket. Here's a pro tip. I'm gonna be using an impact adapter with my drill. These come in a set of three and they're super affordable. I'll leave an affiliate link in the description below if you'd like to pick some up for yourself. We're gonna divide our trailer assembly into four main parts. The front frame assembly, the rear frame assembly, the tongue system, the axle, the springs, and the tires. Let's lay out the pieces of the frame. There are four side rails, one, two, three, and four. Now mine were labeled right front, right rear, left front, left rear. Next, there are six cross members. One, two, three, four, five, and six. The instruction book mentions a right and a left side. Imagine you're driving this thing like a car. That's gonna be the right, that's gonna be the left. The front cross member has the brackets for the tongue and the other five are exactly the same. We're gonna put this thing together upright. Some videos show putting it together upside down, but I think that's just confusing. Here's the orientation of the cross members. One side has more holes than the other. That side goes down. The center cross member for both the front and the rear frame, I'm gonna orient it pointing back. That way road debris doesn't get caught up in there. One thing I did wanna mention, in a future video, we will be upgrading these wheels. My old trailer has 13 inch, these are only 12. Let's talk about the orientation for the side rails for the front section. These two holes, this design here is for the marker light, so that's gonna go to the front. These two holes are for the hinge. That's the orientation for the side rails on the front section. We're gonna get some bolts and we're gonna start putting this thing together. On the parts list, there's 78 of these M10 bolts. Those are the bolts that we're gonna to use to put the frame together. As we put this thing together, I'm gonna to have all the bolts a little loose and then we'll tighten them all up at the end. These tow bar brackets are gonna go on each side and then they're gonna share a bolt with the center cross member. They provided four slightly longer bolts. These go into four critical positions. Let me show you where those are. The longer bolts are to accommodate the extra thickness of three layers of steel. And we'll do the same for the other side. Next, we're gonna install these leaf spring brackets on the back. There's one on the right and there's one on the left. These also have shared bolt holes with the rails. The 
This is where that longer bolt comes into play. Filming everything makes it twice as hard. Before you tighten all your bolts down, you wanna make sure it's square. That's what we're doing next. Now that we're all square, we're gonna tighten down all the other bolts. Now we're gonna to put together the rear frame. It's gonna go just like the front. You'll notice they omitted a bolt here on the bottom. That's because this part of the rear frame sets on top of the leaf spring bracket. Next, we're gonna to put together the front tow bar assembly. This is how the trailer is going to attach to your vehicle. This thing only has five or six pieces. We've got the two tow bars. We've got the T-plate, that bottom mounting plate, the hitch coupler, and the safety chains. Just like we did with the frames, we're going to put all the bolts in loose and then tighten them down. Safety chains. I don't really care for the way the instructions call for these safety chains to be mounted. This is one long chain and the instructions call for it to be mounted through the center link of the forward bolt of the coupler. So I'm cutting my chain in half and I'm using two grade eight bolts that I picked up at Lowe's for $4 so that I can have two separate attachment points, which I think will be much stronger. I'm curious to know what you guys think about this setup. Is this better? Is it weaker? Is it stronger? Leave a comment and let me know. All right, so here's where we're at. We've got the rear frame assembled, the front frame is assembled, and we've got the tongue assembled. Let's attach the tongue to the front frame and then we'll put on the leaf springs and the axle. In the nuts and bolts kit, you'll find two M12 bolts. These are bigger bolts. This is how the tongue is gonna to attach to the frame. Okay. All right, lift it again. I thought you were more manly than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now set her down, set her down. Okay. Yeah, nice. Next, we're going to insert the L-pin. Next, we tighten up the M12 bolts. To put the leaf springs and axles, we're gonna flip it upside down. Next, leaf springs. Here we start off with our spring, of course, eyes forward. And we have our four spring bolts, the M12 by 75. Next, the axle. Here you have your depressions, and here you have your protrusions. Just line it up. You should have four U-bolts and two spring plates. These U-bolt nuts do have a torque spec of 15 pounds. All of the U-bolts are tight and the bolts for the leaf springs are also tight. We're gonna flip this thing back over and put on the tires. One of the big questions out there on YouTube and the internet with these trailers is, is that blue grease that's in the bearings, is it okay to use? Well, that is not Cosmoline. 
That is bearing grease. Before we put the wheels on, we need to get these fenders on because those bolt holes are not going to be accessible once the wheel is on. Attaching these fenders is pretty straightforward. The first thing we're going to do is attach the fender bracket to the leaf spring bracket. Two bolts, those are the M10s with nuts. And then we're going to attach the fender to the top of that bracket using the same M10 bolts and nuts. And then we'll do the same thing to the other side. To put these wheels on, you need to remove the dust caps. For that, I'm going to use a wooden dowel rod and a rubber mallet. I'm just going to slip this through the hub and tap it off of there. When you take these dust caps off, be sure that you don't dislodge the bearing or the seal on the back end. To put the wheels onto the axle, slide the tire over the spindle and then the washer. Thread the castle nut onto the axle until the tire starts spinning with slight resistance. Then back off slightly and line up the gaps in the castle nut with the holes in the axle. Insert the cotter pin through the castle nut and axle. Bend the pins in opposite directions to secure the tire. Replace the dust caps by tapping them with a rubber mallet to seat them in. Don't forget to lubricate the Zerk fittings on the back of the hub assemblies with a heavy bearing grease. I will be replacing these dust caps with bearing buddies in a future video. When I'm finished with that one, I'll put it on the channel. The torque specs on these lug nuts are 85 to 90 foot pounds. Be sure to check them before you head out on the road. Next, you're going to want to put on your hinges. There are two pieces to this hinge kit. There's a straight side and an offset side. The straight side goes on the front part of the frame and the offset piece, it goes on the back frame. I will admit, it might be easier to put these on before you put on your fenders. The easiest way that I found to put these two together is just like this. And then I'll line up these hinge holes and then I'll put one of these M20 bolts through it. You need to make sure that you don't over tighten these two bolts because this thing does need to hinge. Next up, caster brackets. These caster brackets are what hold these really cheesy casters that we'll be replacing in a future video. These are the brackets that the trailer is going to move around on once it's folded up and in the upright position. For the orientation for these caster brackets, you want to make sure the foot is down and that it is positioned just like this. It's really hard to get a wrench in there to hold the caster while you tighten that nut. So I just used a pair of vice grips. This trailer comes with four of these carriage bolts. Two go on each side. You need to have all four of these in place before you take this thing down the road. This is what holds the rear frame to the leaf spring bracket. The Harbor Freight folding trailer also comes with eight stake pockets. These are gonna mount to all four sides of this trailer and provide a nice attachment point for a rail system if you decide to build one. A modification that I'm definitely planning on making a video for in the future. Next up is the lighting kit. When I'm finished with that video, I'll put a link to it right here. I'm glad you watched and I hope you'll watch again.